You're You're listening to to Death Death Metal Metal Disco. Disco. So you've been listening to me ramble on for quite some time about this, that, and the other. So allow me to ramble on briefly about how I operate this podcast. There's lots of options for how you want to post and host your podcast and put it out into the world. Uh, I did a lot of research on mine, and for me, I decided to go with Anchor.fm. If you haven't heard of Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. First of all, it's free. That was a big selling point to me. Free is good. Uh, I like free. There's also tools for creation to help you record and edit your podcast from your phone or your computer or your tablet or whatever you're using. I find that to be effective. So we got free. We got uh, recording and editing. Both big deals. uh, Because they are. Anchor will also distribute your podcast for you. So it can be heard on Spotify. It could be heard on Apple Podcasts, it could be heard on Google Podcasts, and many, many more. That is a huge time saver because I don't have to go to each of those things to upload. So I like that distribution right then and there. And again, it's free. You can make money from your podcast, if you're into that kind of thing, with no minimum listenership. That could be cool. I think you should try it. It's everything you need to make a podcast all in one place. So if you've been on the fence about making a podcast and the only thing holding you back is how you want to host it or create it or whatever, download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. It's worth it. You know, every time I need to do a new episode, I try to think of creative and fun ways to say hello to my audience, and I fail pretty much every single time. I come up with the same thing over and over and over again. Welcome, 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 friends of the death metal disco. It is me. It is I, your host, James. So this time I changed it up by mocking my own intro for my own podcast because why the fuck not? I got nothing else to do. The last few episodes of this podcast, I've tried something new by actually outlining bullet points of what I would like to discuss, some specifics, um, but really just, you know, an outline of things to talk about. This one I'm going to try and keep short, um but I got kind of a lot of crap on here, so it might not be short. I don't know. I originally thought I had another outline or another episode outlined, but I don't unless I come up with a year in review, which I might. So anyway, if you listen to the last episode, it was about the movies, the the fall and uh, uh, Wakanda Forever and Bullet Train and Blood Red Sky. I recommend all those. They were good. And I recorded that uh, about an hour and a half, two hours ago, before I left and got dinner. I'm currently recording in a hotel room in Durham, North Carolina, where I am working. uh, I worked today, tomorrow, and then again, Wednesday I will work. And then Thursday, assuming my flights aren't canceled due to the massive polar vortex that's going to send my hometown into like high of negative 12 with a wind chill that feels like negative 25, Um, it shouldn't be that cold here, but, you know, I'm just hoping I can get out because I'm supposed to go spend Christmas with me ma in the dirty south. So, fingers crossed for that. This episode will be dropping before then. Speaking of traveling, um, I wanted to talk about just doing new experiences. Like, if you've lived in the same state, go learn about your state. Go do the things. Go do the touristy things. Um, I've lived in Colorado my whole life, save for about a year and a half that I lived in Northern California, um, in a little town called Willows, and I think we lived in an even smaller town called Orland. I was about seven, I think we moved out there when I was six, and we moved out shortly before, shortly after I turned eight. Ultimately, it ended up being just about a year and a half that we were there, I think. Um, But otherwise, I've lived in Colorado, and up until I took this job... I'd never really traveled anywhere. I've been to Hawaii, um, went and saw my mom in South Carolina when she lived there back in early, early, early 2000s. And then uh, once before I left my former job and took my current job, 
uh, when she moved to Atlanta. Went and saw her there. Anyway, um, yeah, so I haven't really traveled too much. And I guess 2016, the spring of 2016, I went to uh, Canada, Vancouver, British Columbia for the first time. Well, only time. Uh, well, actually, I guess I've been there once since then, but not to Vancouver. Um, but I'd, I'd made that trip. I wanted to go somewhere. I wanted to go out of town. And I basically copied my friend Jamie and her husband's trip from a few years prior to that. Flew to Seattle and drove it was about a three-hour drive from there to Vancouver, British Columbia. You know, got to flash the old passport, get searched heavily by border security on both sides. Um, going in, they actually made me get out of the car and whatever. And then coming back, the guy just basically dumped out my whole duffel bag in the back seat of the rental car that I had. It was an adventure all in its own, just that that little trip. Um, you know, piss poor planning. Something about piss poor planning provides piss poor results or some shit. I don't know. I didn't really plan it all that well. I had basic to do things and then had never rented a car and then I had trouble with that. But that's a whole different story. You know, I've I've never been one to go hiking or you know I'd go camping my my aunt Kathy thank you for listening Kathy um anytime we got to hang out with her when we were kids you know we'd do a lot of camping we'd go camping we'd go to uh, different reservoirs lots of fishing um she loved the outdoors my own family my you know my mom dad we didn't um I don't think I ever went camping with my mom where it was her idea uh, a lot of that's just because we didn't have money growing up um, you know, she'd date people that would occasionally do that. I remember going to Pueblo Reservoir once with one of the guys she was with that we lived with at the time, and that was a shit show, but it was weather-related shit show and not, you know, just because. And, you know, that was the only time I can remember going camping with just us. But even then, it's like, um, you know, I never really did stuff like that. I had, I bought a tent years ago. I've used it a few times, but I've never really ventured around Colorado. Colorado has a lot of shit to do, like go into the mountains. Uh, you know, I've never skied because I value my life and probably would like to save myself from embarrassment and falling and turning into a giant snowball and taking out hundreds upon hundreds of other people on the slopes. Uh, but also, you know, that costs money. And growing up, we just didn't have any to, to do that kind of stuff. So that was never a thing for me. We'd go up to the mountains and, you know, hang out for a day or whatever, but that was about it. Colorado also has, like, Central City and Black Hawk, and for a long time, I don't know if it's still true, but for a long time, those are the only places you can go gamble, like in casinos they had them there. Um, and up until just two years ago, when I went on a, a date that I met on Match.com, I had never been to either of those things to do that activity. Uh, you know, every now and then people would ask me if I wanted to go, but it was always so last minute that... You know, a lot of people here, they'll just go for a day, hang out up there, get some food, whatever, spend 50 bucks, maybe lose 50 bucks, maybe win a thousand. And that's just something I never did until we went on this little date where I lost 50 bucks and she managed to win 500 after I taught her how to play roulette. So I guess my teaching skills are great. My gambling skills, not so much. And then it wasn't until uh, whatever year we did the Stanley Film Festival for the first time, which I think was 2014. Um, I'd been up to Estes Park that I can remember once, and that was when my mom and her husband at the time, whose name escapes me now, uh, they came to Colorado and my sister had, you know, booked us the ghost tour at the Stanley Hotel, and we went and did that, and it was fun, and Estes Park is beautiful, but then the film festival, uh, we would go, we did that for two years before they, uh, basically canceled it and then had to relocate because of some bullshit, you know, they told everybody, oh, the, the hotel was granted an 11, 11 million dollar uh, fund to build a new state-of-the-art theater in Estes Park, and yada, 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 and that just, that just wasn't true, um, and I don't know if they lied to us, or if that was what they had been originally told, and then that fell through, either way, it didn't happen, and then that film festival turned into the Overlook Film Festival, uh, originally happening happening at the Overlook Lodge or the Timberline Lodge in uh, Mount Hood, Oregon, and then now it goes on in New Orleans, and I've done that a few times. But things like going going to Estes Park, which is only you know an hour and a half, two hours outside of Denver, um, just never did, never do, and I regret 
I wouldn't even say I regret, but I, in hindsight, it would have been nice if I had just done that. I do a lot of things on my own, as it is. Like, you know, I'm not, I'm not afraid. To, I've always, I've been alone so long in my life that, you know, going to do things by myself is usually not a big deal to me. Um, I just have to be in the mood. Like Telluride, we go to the Telluride Horror Show. That's in Telluride. It's about a seven-hour drive from Denver. That's not something I would just do on a whim and go alone. But going to Estes Park, I've gone to Estes Park a few times just on a whim, just to go and drive and hang out for a little while. I plan it poorly every single time just because the last time I did it was uh, during all the lockdowns in 20... Well, not the last time I randomly did it, but um, in 2020, I just decided, you know what? I'm going to drive up there. It's going to be cool. You know, everybody's stuck in their houses. Well, everybody also had the idea of going to Estes Park and hanging out for an afternoon and it was just packed there was no I couldn't even park I think I went to the Safeway that's there um, but didn't really do anything I turned around and just drove right back and that wasn't bad I mean got me out of the house but really really outside of that you know Vestas Park is beautiful and if you get a chance to go you should Tim uh, Telluride is beautiful if you get a chance to go you should even if you don't get a chance you should make that chance but it just, just something I've been thinking about especially this year, and it all started, I mean, the beginning of this year, I was out of town for, shit, almost 12 solid weeks, um, the first three months I was gone every single week, uh, I think I had one week off in there that I wasn't traveling, I wasn't off, but I wasn't traveling, um, up until, like, April, and then finally had a little more time, a little more time, but this year's been a pretty busy travel year, and, one thing one thing I've just never really familiarized myself with is all the things that Colorado has. Even like just going downtown. I don't live near downtown. It's about a half hour, 45 minute drive with traffic um, to get downtown, which isn't far, but there's hardly ever anything that I feel like doing down there. If I go see a show or whatever, that's notwithstanding, but it's, you know, very rare that I'm just like, I'm going to go downtown, but... It used to be something that I would do back in the day when I was younger and more willing to potentially get into fights, but now it's just too dangerous. You know, average homeless person will stab you or, you know, even pull a gun on you. 16th Street Mall is kind of a shit show. In the daytime, it's not too terrible, but at nighttime, I wouldn't fucking risk it these days, um, just based on things I've heard. But go out and find things in your town or even your state. Um, you know, they might seem touristy. But there's a reason. And that's the one thing I've learned. Like, I started dating a girl earlier this year. And uh, she's amazing. She's fantastic. I have did more things in my own state this year uh, than I probably have ever done that were, you know, inspired by her. Not even inspired. It was her her looking for things to do. And then we did them. And they've been great. And part of it's the company, obviously, but just doing new things. Like um, the weekend before Thanksgiving, uh, she and I, we stayed in Colorado Springs for the weekend. And we did uh, uh, the Cog Railway to Pikes Peak, to the summit of Pikes Peak, which is something I've always heard of, but I've never once done it. And... It's kind of surprising considering my dad's kind of a train nerd and and loves the idea of doing those things. Um, apparently, he's done that within the last few years. Um, him and my stepmom and probably my my uh, stepbrother's kids. But it's not something we ever did. And, I mean, back in the day when light rail first opened, we would go ride the light rail just to fucking ride it. We'd end up downtown or something and go into 16th Street Mall and get food and go to Sharper Image or whatever, but... You know, ultimately it was because the light rail, like that was the whole purpose. When the Denver International Airport opened, they have the trains going from the terminal to all the concourses uh, back pre 9-11. We would go there and we would, you know, you didn't have to have a ticket to get past security. I don't even remember if there was security, at least not to the point it is now. But, you know, we just go hop on the train, wander around the airport. I have to keep pausing to breathe because the way I'm sitting is not conducive to good... Uh, good breathing for talking a lot, so I'm trying to adjust that, so if my audio changes a lot, um, just know it's because I'm adjusting position, trying to figure out a better, more comfortable way to sit, 
Anyway, find shit to do in your state. If you don't live here in Colorado, but, uh, you know, we did the cog railway thing and that was really, really cool. Like, like just riding the train for an hour up there. It was very cool. The conductor gives us a bunch of, you know, really bad dad puns, but also is a wealth of knowledge um, about the history of the railway and history of Pikes Peak and all kinds of shit that even though I've lived here forever, uh, I just didn't know some stuff I did, but, um, it was really cool. And then when you get to the top, they have a visitor center, um, gift shop with some snacks and whatever, but that's assuming you can get to the top. If the weather's too bad, they, they don't, they give you a partial refund, but you know, we, we made it up to the top. It was really cool. I was mostly concerned that I'd have to go to the bathroom because um, there are no bathrooms on the trains and they do not stop them. I'm sure if I shit myself, they'd stop. But uh, luckily, didn't have any any risk of that. Like, I felt great. I was a little worried, but uh, ultimately, I, you know, made it to the top, used the bathroom. Everybody was happy, especially my bladder. And I did mention in the last episode that we did that, and it was the same weekend... Um, that we saw Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, and then that was the same weekend as the Club Q uh, shooting, which really, 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 really set me off. Like, not quite as badly as the as the King Supers one did, um, but, you know, I had friends, family, that actually have been to that club, so uh, she saw it on the news the next morning, and we were just... We were actually seeing Wakanda Forever that night, um, and the theater we were at is just, I think, two miles from there, but it was just kind of eerie. Um, I don't want to get into all that, but anyway, if you see video of the interview with the father of the shooter, alleged shooter, which, fuck that, it's the shooter, um, yeah, kind of tells you everything you need to know about how that kid was raised, so... Shitty. But I digress. So back to traveling. I had originally written out this outline. Uh, shit, probably probably right after we did the Cog Railway and I was going to talk about it. And then I guess kept postponing, postponing, postponing. Um, but I have a lot of travel scheduled from then until the end of the year. Partially just because of work. And the other reason was because I'm trying to hit Premier 1K with United Airlines. And they even lowered their requirements um, for this year and last year. So it didn't take quite as much to get there. Uh, slightly lower dollar amount and a few fewer flight numbers. Um, it was like 36 flights or qualifying flights and something like 13500 bucks, Or you just spend $15,000. Normally, I think it's 50-something flights and $18,000, maybe. Um, they're going back up for next year, but I wanted to hit it. I've been working for this job since 2016, so I got six years in now. And I was thinking I probably would have hit that very, very early on, but then we regionalized, and I was like, oh. And last year, I was about, I think it was $400 shy of Premier Platinum. And I was kind of hoping, oh, I'm so close, they'll just do it. No, that, that doesn't happen. It doesn't work that way. So this year I wanted to make it, and if my travel for Oakland uh, had continued the way it was, um, that wouldn't have been a problem. I probably would have hit that a couple months ago, but that wasn't in the cards, so I had to come up with other stuff. had a trip that was supposed to be to Florida for um, two weeks ago, or three weeks ago now, I guess, and that got canceled pretty last minute, so I had a free week, um, and I had a trip scheduled for New Year's Eve. I was going to go to Niagara Falls for New Year's Eve, but uh, that got canceled. So um, that's kind of a bummer, but I mean, it was a big bummer and I'm very sad about that. But, uh, you know, other things have happened. So in, in the place of the Florida trip, I ended up deciding that I needed to book a last minute trip to the UK. And Part of it was because I needed to spend the money to try and get my status. And I was like, you know, I want to go somewhere I've never been. I want to go somewhere that's worthy of a story. And I want to do something that um, is familiar, but I wouldn't have a lot of time. 
So as it turns out, uh, I used to be in a band called a Legion. And they, at the time, were touring Europe. And specifically, when I went out there, they were in the UK. And it was them, in Fury, um, Harbinger, which is a UK-based band. Um, who the fuck else was on that? Rivers of Nile and Fallujah. Why do I think there's one more band that I'm forgetting? That might be it. Um, they were doing a full, it was, it was almost like, like 25, 30 shows or something like that. Back to back, no nights off. And I had contemplated going to Germany um, the weekend of Thanksgiving. So like leave Friday uh, the day after and then come back Sunday. Um because I needed to go to Florida, and then the Florida schedule got all fucky, and I got canceled off of that. Uh, but that was that was not a big deal. So I ended up booking a trip. Asked my boss on Thanksgiving, tell you know, asking her if I could have Wednesday, Thursday, Friday off of the following week, since Florida was no longer a thing, and I didn't have any other project commitments. Um, and she said, "Yeah," and she said, "Why?" And I said, "Cause I want to go to England for a couple of days." And she had just gone for her anniversary, so she had hit me up with a few restaurant recommendations, and not that I had time to go to either of them, um, but I said, okay, found flights, booked a United Premium Plus seating, which is amazing, and I'm supposed to go to Japan in March, and I need to see if I can upgrade my seat to that uh, somehow, some way. I booked it with Miles, so going to cost a pretty penny. I looked at first class, and those were like... $5,000. So that's not happening. But, you know, if I can get lucky and sneak in on one of those premium plus seats for one leg or the other, because it's direct both ways, that would be fantastic because it's like a 13 hour flight. And those seats honestly were the shit. Super comfortable, more space, uh, bigger TVs if you choose to watch them. Um, but it's on the Dreamliner. So even the the regular economy is still economy plus and the Dreamliner is just a kick-ass plane so I'm not too upset if I can't but I would rather you know get the nice seats so I got lucky and booked a direct flight out of Denver uh, for Tuesday I worked all day Tuesday and then left for the airport at like 3 30 and was on a plane at 5 30 um, going to the UK and wasn't sure if it was a great idea I always get a little bit of buyer's remorse anytime I drop a pretty penny on something, and that included that. I um, wasn't sure if it was worth it, but I think it was, because even though I didn't get to do a lot of stuff, just because I thought I'd sleep. It was about a nine-hour flight on the way out there, and I did not sleep at all. I thought being a red-eye flight that I'd sleep for at least a few hours. Nope, I probably got maybe an hour of sleep. If I'm lucky. Um, I did watch most of the Wednesday show on Netflix. Um, but I didn't actually sleep. I did eat. Which is not something I've done previously. Like when I went to Bali. Uh, I just hate using airplane bathrooms. And I especially don't like bugging other people in the row. Because I always book a window. I don't like bothering them to get up to go to the bathroom. So I just don't eat. Plus getting my fat ass smaller. So I can bring down a tray table in normal seating. Is difficult, and even in this premium plus shit where the tray table is in the armrest, I had to like recline all the way uh, to get the table down in front of me. But that's a whole other thing. So the plan was when I got there that um, the original plan was, I should say, is that I would hopefully be able to check into my hotel. I landed at ten third or nine thirty in the morning, and I think I got to the hotel about an hour and a half later. I didn't check any bags. I carried on my carry on bag and my backpack. And uh, about an hour later is when I got to the hotel, and we were we were on time for the flight. It was super 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 smooth flight. Um, it was just a really good flight. Uh, I'd never been there, obviously, so I didn't know what to expect with uh, passport checking and customs and all that crap. And I'm not gonna lie, other than it, the seemed like it seemed like it was about a two and a half mile walk from the airplane to. Uh, get to the trains, which were all after after security. Um, but getting through that was a breeze. They have a uh, 
They had two lines. They had one, well, they had three lines technically, you know, people with specific country passports and then people with co- passports from other countries. And I was in the one that was the, the UK passports, American passports, and various other trusted, you know, least, less sketchy passports, I guess. And that line was moving smooth, but you go to an automated thing where you scan your passport on a thing and then this robot has like a iPad camera type of thing that scans your face and takes a picture of you to match up things. And uh, if they have issues, you go and talk to a human. And if they don't, you move on through to baggage claim. And other than the fact it took me a couple tries to get my passport to scan, um, that, that was a breeze. That was an absolute fucking breeze. I was amazed at how smooth and quick that was. Some people had to go talk to them. It would tell them to go get further assistance. Um, Some people preferred to stand on the line to talk to a human to begin with, which I thought was a little weird, but that was the last thing I felt like doing. Even though I'm sure that uh, they've probably been told several times before that the reason to come to the UK was just because, and that would have been my reason. So I get through security, I walk crazy crazy distance it was very weird because i was like all right i'm through security uh now i gotta go to customs i'm really hoping i don't have anything weird in like my toiletry bag that they're like oh you can't take your toothpaste in um but uh i never actually had to go to customs it was so weird I, like they put us in baggage claim and then i saw the exit sign so i just walked out then i had to venture down under the airport tunnels for a long time until i figured out where i was going i bought a train ticket and took the uh, I don't remember Heathrow Express from Heathrow down into Paddington. It's about a 15 minute train ride, and it was a very smooth process. Very nice train. I was very very fucking sweaty because it was so goddamn humid. I couldn't believe how humid it was, and it was really only like 40 degrees, but it didn't feel that at all. And part of that I think was being in the basement of the airport. All the tunnels and shit probably weren't as cold. Um, Definitely as hot, though. I was sticky. I was gross. So I get to there, or the hotel. It was about a 10-minute walk from the train station to the hotel. So I'm walking, and I'm just like, got my suitcase, my backpack, sweaty. Uh, Get there, 10.30 in the morning. I'm tired. I ask if my room might be ready. I would paid for it with uh, hotel points, with Hilton points. And uh, I talked to a lady, and she was the sweetest reception girl I've ever talked to in my life. And she's like, oh, yeah, we even upgraded you to a to a bigger room, and your room's ready now. And I was like, oh, my God, that's awesome. So I go up to my room. I kind of clean up a little bit. Uh, I had originally planned on taking a nap for just a couple of hours um, just so I could wake up, still be daylight, go wander around a little bit. Plus, I didn't want to sleep so long that I couldn't sleep overnight now with the time change. And uh, I forgot to set my alarm, so I ended up sleeping for like five hours and when I woke up it was dark out and basically dinner time so I got dressed uh, took a shower got dressed and then uh, decided to go get some food wandered back towards the train station for a little while I got some video of uh, I think it's called Paddington Market which was right next to the hotel and they had it all decorated up for Christmas there was some sort of Christmas party with um, I think she was a DJ uh, playing Christmas music I, I didn't see it while the party was actually going. I made it over there after the party had stopped, but or at least after the the her portion had stopped. And, you know, tons of people sitting outside, tables nicely lit with, you know, Christmas lights, which is really my favorite thing about Christmas is all the lights. Um and it was it was very cool. I got some video of it. I'm hopefully gonna try and edit that together and put it up on the socials just because it's just something I'm trying to do from time to time. Um, but that was really pretty. Then I went and found food, and I wanted to go get fish and chips at this pub that I had walked by on my way to the hotel, but uh, it was standing room only in there. It was just packed with people. Ended up going to a Greek place, bought a couple things. There was nowhere to sit in there because um, they were super, super small businesses. Um, so I just got it to go, took it back to the hotel, got myself a little cappuccino from the bar because the little cafe things, coffee machine was broken. And that was dumb. But the cappuccino I got from the bar was really, really good. Was kind of insulted by the Italian bartender. Like, he was from Italy. Very, very, very thick Italian accent. He asked me if I was from the States. And I said yes. He goes, oh, I love the American accent. So great. And I was like, well, 
you're in luck because we love the Italian accents. And he goes, oh, no, the American accent, it's it's so great. He's like, they're like, oh, yo, 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 yo. And I'm like, what the fuck? But I get it. He was like five foot five. He was very enthusiastic about life, which was cool. It was admirable, but thanks for the insult. Get my food, go back upstairs, hang out um, just for a little while. Still very, very exhausted. So I decide to sleep. I'm going to try and wake up super early and go do touristy things because I had bought a bus ticket for 2.30 in the afternoon um, the following day to take a two-hour bus ride down to Southampton, which is on the south side of the country. Not super, super far south, but two hours south of London. And uh, that was where I was going to go see Allegion and the rest of the show. My whole idea being that I would surprise Greg and Michael and Ezra, who's, you know, uh, you know, filling in on vocals since Riley pieced out a few months ago for some reason. So I needed to go do things and then be back to get my shit and head to head back to the bus station, which is at the central train station. Um, so I wandered around, but I slept in. I took too long getting ready because I'm dumb. I decided I was going to get breakfast at the hotel. I was doing all fancy things. In that hotel, I stayed at the... Uh, the Hilton Metropole in Paddington. I think it's called the Hilton Paddington Metropole or something like that. Um, pretty nice hotel. Insanely busy. And I don't know if it was just holidays or because it's kind of a tourist destination or just because of flight crews. They had a lot of flight crews that stay there when they get uh, layovers. And, uh, I mean, there were flight crew people everywhere. Just fucking everywhere. Finally, by the time I, I asked if I could get late checkout, but they were completely booked up, so there was no late checkout for me. Um, so I was able to pack my stuff and then leave it with the bell desk uh, or concierge or whatever, and that was nice because that was free of charge. Um, and then after that, I was like, you know what? I'm going to go do one thing that kind of gets me centrally based on the maps that I was looking at, and I can see things from up high, and that was with the Eye of London. And so I bought the VIP ticket so I didn't have to stand in line. Um, and then they just get you on and it was literally hopped in line while they saw that I had the VIP thing, um, go through a little metal detector check and then bam, you bypass the hundred or so people that are standing in line and you're on a thing. And I don't think, I don't know how far that up that thing goes. It's like 500 feet, something like that. It's very much like the, uh, the high roller in Vegas, which I've done before, Except there's no bar service, there's no alcohol, and it's just, you know, the little carriage thing that you stand in and get 360 degree views, and I was taking pictures and video of everything I could see. Um, the Thames, 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 I don't know what it's fucking called, the river, it was right there, the River Thames, I think it is. Um, I saw an Uber boat, which is a pretty large boat that I guess you can request via Uber. And it's like a shuttle boat or something. I don't know. I didn't look into it, but that was impressive. Then I took some videos, saw Big Ben, um, Parliament, drove by uh, Buckingham Palace. I was on the wrong side of the car, so I didn't really get any pictures of that. But um, since I wasn't walking around as much as I had planned on, you know, this was the way to go. It was about a half hour ride. Get done. Get another. It took a half hour to get there in an Uber. And then another half hour or so to get back because traffic there, because of all the damn tourists um, and foot traffic, was just insane. Like, even when I went to New York City with my sister in 2019, I don't think it was as bad as what this was. Uh, yeah, it was probably about as bad as that, but, you know, it was, it was a long time, but it was like, I got to get back to the hotel by 2-ish. Yeah, I think it was, I needed to be back by 2 so I could hoof it to the train station to get back to the central train station by 2.15ish so I can make it to the bus station because I didn't know how far the walk between the two was um, at 2.30 because my ticket was non, uh, non-refundable or non... I don't remember what they called it. I couldn't fucking change the ticket without paying a fee and I wouldn't get a refund if I missed it or anything like that. So luckily I was able to do all of that um, got back there, hopped on the bus. The bus was incredibly nice, not going to lie. It was a really, really, really nice ride. And to be stuck on it for an hour and a half, two hours, was a breeze. Like, it definitely did not feel that way. It was the, it was very weird. Like, 
I'd never been on a bus like that. It was it was super super cool. I don't know if our Greyhound buses or anything like that, but I I mean I wrote these guys a stellar review, but not based on that ride. It was a ride back that was really good. So two hours later, I get we get to Southampton. Have to take a ten minute walk from the bus station to my hotel, which was the Moxie, which is a Marriott chain, I guess. And this was kind of a hip, trendy hotel. Wasn't, I didn't really care for it. It wasn't bad. Like, I travel for work so much. Like, I kind of look at rooms like, how well can you work out of this thing? And you can't. There's there's just no way. Um, but if you're there just to, you know, not be in your room a lot, not a bad place. It was kind of a cool vibe. Um, and Southampton seemed really cool, but I didn't have enough time to go walk around and do a lot of shit. So I cleaned up, I took a shower right quick, changed, um, then got ready to go to the show. I didn't even eat, which was kind of a bummer. I was pretty hungry, but uh, took an Uber. I think it was a little over a mile from the hotel to where they were playing. And I had already bought my ticket online before I even bought um, the airfare to to go out there. I bought the ticket online. uh, So I had that and, uh, you know, go to the show and at first it didn't look like it was going to be very many people and by the time it was all said and done I think the place held like 350 people and I would be shocked if there was anything less than that but it was cool you know the bands played great and it wasn't until after a legion got done I was standing up front but off to the side and so none of them saw me but it was right by the stairs or the steps to get up on the stage going to the green room so when Greg got off I was like, you know what, that was that was pretty good, but you could have done better, you know, giving him shit. But when he got off the stage and I'm I'm telling him that he could have done better, his mind was completely blown. He's like, what the fuck are you doing here? And I was like, oh, I was just in the neighborhood, thought I'd come check out the metal show. And he hadn't seen, I hadn't done a whole lot of posting on social media about it, but he hadn't seen anything that I did post, which was nice. And then Ezra and Michael um, surprised them too, which was awesome, and... Got to hang out backstage with him for a little bit, catch up with Greg, because I haven't seen Greg. It's been a while. It's been been a little while. And probably since I... Seeing him in person was probably since I had him on the podcast in uh, 2021. So, almost two years, year and a half. And uh, we were catching up, you know, talking about his life in Canada with the missus and all those good things and talking to Ezra and and Michael... um, Meeting their drummer, Jeff, who I had not met before. Uh, that's a talented, talented, talented motherfucker right there. I mean, they're all talented. So it was good to see Ezra back up doing his thing with them. That was that actually made me very happy. So, as you know, I liked Riley, but I think Ezra's just more, more of a showman. Um, and his uh, his voice, his, his voice held out really fucking well. I was very, very impressed with... His current sound compared to how he sounded back in the day. There's a lot of uh, factors that had something to do with that, I'm sure. But, I mean, fuck, kudos to you, Ezra. If you happen to listen to this, job well done, my friend. So, I had a um, bus ticket to return the next morning. So, we, we hung out that night. And then I think I got back to the hotel around 11, 11.30. They had to get packed up because they were going to Paris the next day. Um, so, they, they had kind of a... I don't know, like a four-hour bus ride or something that they had to be on before they got to the shuttle, or the ferry, I guess, to get across the channel, Um, which is weird because it's like I never thought I'd have those conversations with people in real life, so it was was cool. I was very pleased to see that band doing so well, just so fucking well. They deserve longer than a 30-minute five-song set, just saying. Uh, If you hear me, Avocado, that's their booking, whoever, that's the the booking uh, agent for them, for the European tour, uh, they deserve longer than five songs and 30 minutes, so fix that shit next time. So anyway, I had a a really early uh, bus ride back to Heathrow to catch my flight, and I think my flight was at, I want to say it was at 11.30, 11.30 in the morning, two-hour bus ride, puts me there at 9.30, so maybe maybe it was 12. Um... I had to be at the bus at 7.30. No, I had to be at the bus at 7. 
and that should get me there by nine. And then I think my flight was at seven or at noon. And they tell you to get to Heathrow about three and a half hours ahead of time because security lines are really long uh, because of extra COVID testing and blah 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 blah. Uh, I woke up at four thirty in the morning just on a whim. I'd been asleep since like eh, one and saw an email from United that my flight, which originally was going from Heathrow to Chicago with a layover there and then Chicago to Denver, had been canceled. And then they had rebooked me on a direct flight, which wasn't available when I originally booked the trip, uh, to Denver for almost an hour earlier. And I was like, oh shit. So I panicked because I was like, fuck, you know, I don't want to be, I don't want to miss this flight and be stuck here. Um, just because of reasons, right? So I I booked it. I, I fucking took a real quick shower, got dressed, packed real quick, surprisingly fast, and uh, speed walked the 10 minutes from the hotel to the bus station. And the whole time I was walking there, I was trying to buy or change the ticket. Remember, I had a non-refundable, non-modify, uh, I can't remember what they called it, but I I couldn't modify my ticket without a fee, and I'm trying to just buy a new ticket on, on their website, and it just wouldn't fucking let me. It kept crashing. I was like, what the hell? Well, I figured it was probably because it's only a few minutes before the bus actually departs. The bus was departing at 5.35 in the morning, and I walked up there at 5.32. The, tr- the bus station was closed, so I couldn't even wait inside if I had missed the bus. Like, I would have been fucked. Um... But the bus driver was standing there at 5.33. Some some girl who had just missed her bus was talking to him. And then he looks at me and I say, Hey, I, I have a ticket for the 7 o'clock bus out of here. Uh, but they canceled my flight and I'm trying to get there earlier and it wouldn't let me change it. And he's like, Oh, yeah, no worries. Just hop on. So he took my bag, threw it under, and then I got on the bus. And there was like five other people on the bus. And I was like, totally cool. He didn't even look at the ticket that I had, um, which he probably should have. And I didn't mention that in my review. But... Just the fact that he allowed me to do that. Granted, I didn't know how many people were on the bus, but you know, I, I made sure to go sit in the back where the seats were super close together just because I didn't want to take up space in case other fully paid people got on the bus. Um, but, I mean, without that, I probably would have been fucked. So, bus ride back. Uh, get to Heathrow. Didn't know the process. Was able to get my bag. I checked my bag this time. I didn't want to fucking deal with that. Uh, going through the airport and all that shit again. So that was good. But, um, you know, it was, I got to the airport like, or I got to my gate really, really, really early. And that's after stopping to grab some food to take to the gate to eat. Uh, which I'm glad I did. Because it was like, it was such a long walk from security to the airport gate. Or to the, to the gate to board. Because it was, uh, it felt like fucking forever. But it was good. And then got on the plane and was hopeful that I would sleep because I was just so tired. And I think I slept off and on for maybe two hours. But the flight back was like ten and a half hours um, because we went way further north. Like we went really like I would say we were in the North Pole for a little while or at least the the Arctic Circle for a, a pretty good chunk. And I don't know what the deal is with that. Maybe they just have so many flights coming out of the States going to Europe that the uh the the routes that we took to get out there were probably a little busier so having to go north like super far north and then come back almost directly south into Colorado was the way to go but that added like almost two full hours to our flight time I think plus with the um headwinds and stuff it just usually takes longer to come back this direction westerly I guess but it was cool you know I just slept like absolute butthole that whole time but I will say, oh, excuse me, I keep yawning, but I will say, um, with the relevance to the rest of this episode, like, I spent more money on that trip just between the airfare and uh, random shit I did that was kind of touristy. Like, the yeah, Eye of London wasn't super expensive. It was a little more expensive with the VIP, but it wasn't bad. Um, but the bus ticket, the train tickets, uh, the Ubers that I took... The UK is expensive anyway, um, and the dollar is not super strong with it right now. Uh, I spent more money than I probably should have, but I'm not going to lie. It was absolutely fucking worth it. Like, I would do it again in a heartbeat. 
it was just you hear about people who are like, you know what, I just wanted to go somewhere. So I went to the airport and I looked at the board and I said, get me on that first flight to wherever. And this was kind of like that. It was a little better plan than that. But I mean, that's the first time I've done anything to that level. And I couldn't be happier about having done it. It was great to see Greg and Ezra and Michael and meet Jeff. And then Greg introduced me to people in the other bands. Like, um, I can't remember the fucker's name now. He was hilarious. He plays guitar in Black Crown Initiate and is filling in uh, with, uh, uh, oh my God, Rivers of Nile. Filling in with them. Um, and he was hilarious. Like, he was the funniest, funniest fucking dude. And even Greg said that he's one of the funniest people he's ever, ever had the pleasure of spending time with. So that was cool. You know, meeting those people. Um, meeting musicians that, you know, I'd see live, but maybe not necessarily meet. In the metal community, it's easier to meet, you know, these really great people than than you think it is. Even the average audience member can usually meet them. Um, people were coming up to Greg while he and I were talking the whole time, even I mean, before we were actually out at the booth, the merch booth, because he didn't work the merch booth, but we stood there for a little while. Um, you know, it was it was really cool. It was absolutely worth it. And if nothing else, it makes me want to go back to the UK really, really badly. But first, going to Japan, and then potentially doing Germany uh, next fall. But I don't know if that's happening yet, at least for me. So, thanks for listening to me ramble about my random adventure. That's going to wrap this up. I really love you guys. And I hope, if uh you hear this before Christmas, I hope you have a good Christmas holiday or whatever holiday you do, if you do any. And uh, I will talk to you soon. Much love, motherfuckers. Thank you for listening to Death Metal Disco.